So, um, I was in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I got booked to do a show in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's, it's not that far out from Harrisburg, PA. So, um, the guy that booked me, super sweet, super sweet guy, very sweet guy. Um, he came up to me, I, I show up to the show, it's a, it's a very smoky bar, right? And, uh, I'm already, like, I was starting to feel a little bit. You know, I, I started to feel a little bit um, scratchy in my throat. So, uh, you know, it was like, all right, this is this is a bit much, but whatever, it's fine. Don't worry about it, right? I'm, I'm going to sit, I'm going to watch the comics, and I'm going to get ready to do this show. And I was, uh, you know, I was brought into headline. I was uh, going to do 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, fine. And he comes over, and he was telling me about, like, how excited he is because, um comics like me never come to areas like this uh basically saying like highbrow intellectual comics don't come to uh predominantly um urban black bars to perform and that's probably true i i, I don't i don't but I, I didn't really care i don't i i don't change my style for black slash urban rooms i just don't i just don't see a point in it um, I've always kind of treated it as they're, they're another audience. And they're, and they're sometimes, you know, they are sometimes a tougher audience. And, but I don't treat them any differently. I don't come in to be like, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't have much to prove to anybody. It's just like, this is who I am and this is, I've constructed the show. Um, I hope you're along for the ride. That's kind of how I approach it. Uh, I don't know if that's the best way to approach it, but it's the way that's most comfortable to me. I've gotten into arguments with comics about this, where like other comics will change the way that they uh, perform in front of all black crowds. I don't. Uh, you know, I, I, I think sometimes in comedy we forget that the audience is smart. They are smart people. But um, the industry has forced us to think that they're not, to think to go for, for lowbrow humor, and that's um, that's, that's sometimes encouraged, right? Like our, even our society doesn't really encourage anything intellectual or, or to be or to be okay with the idea of intellectualism and gathering knowledge. I've never felt that way. I've always thought that that is a very inaccurate scope of humanity and I've, I've, I think we're all we all have the potential and capability of being very intelligent smart people um, to, to learn and to grow and to accept art in various different forms uh, it's up to the person and it's up to us to let go of these very antiquated societal norms it's my thumb so I uh, go into this black bar right uh, meet the guy super sweet dude shakes my hand and he pays me up front which is like that's not a fucking thing that happens and uh he was like you know get a drink on the house blah 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 so I was like alright it's the beginning of the show I can get a drink now so I got a drink and I'm sitting in the back of the room and I'm and I was like I'm, I'm just gonna watch the show I'm just gonna watch the show host goes up very energetic Def Jam style black guy you know uh, interacting with the audience. And the audience is a little bit hyped up and ruckus. And I was like, okay, they seem energetic. That's pretty good. That's good for comedy. You know, you want you want a crowd that's going to be a little energetic. Um, and some of the comics go on a little too long. Uh, like, they're supposed to do 10 minutes, but they think they ended up doing, like, 15 or 20. Like, it seemed like the sets were going off a little too long. And finally, uh, you know, there was one more comic. It was a female black comic out of Baltimore that uh, was a little um, deadpan. She wasn't, like, high energy, like, what y'all do, motherfuckers, all that kind of shit. Like, it wasn't it wasn't that, like, Def Jammy style of comedy or whatever, right? Uh, she was pretty, like, mellow, and she talked about, like, mental health stuff. Uh, and I thought, she was very, I thought she was very funny. I thought she... Uh, you know, but like the crowd was not vibing into it. This is also closing into two hours into the show. 
And two hours into the show, we've got a bunch of people that kind of kept the that same level of energy throughout the whole show. Um, this high energy, high interactive, kind of dirty, uh, you know. So, and I, I have, I, I don't care about any of that sort. Of, like, unless you're up there reinforcing negative stereotypes and doing shit that I've heard from the 80s. I, you know, if that's your style of comedy, if your style of comedy is high energy and interactive with the audience and whatever, I don't care. That's fine. Do 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 what's comfortable to you. That's all I want you. That's all I want any performer to do. So, uh, you know, I go up after this girl and, uh, they, they, like, didn't really respond to her a whole lot, so I think she cut her set a little short. And I went up, I got introduced, and I go up, and I felt, I mean, I felt bad for the girl. Like, I was like, hey, give a round of applause, you know, to her and all the other comics that you guys have seen, blah, blah, blah. And there was a DJ, and I was like, give her this guy, the fucking DJ, working hard, making sure the music sounds good, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I've never had, like, a DJ. I told a little story about how, like, oh, um... You know, usually I get brought up to Nas. Uh, that's, that's like, I'm, I'm like a Nas kind of comic, you know. Like, so, something just innocuous to, like, throw, throw it out there. Like a throwaway joke just to, like, get people to settle in. Uh, and then I uh, started my set, and, you know, this is what I was working on, Empathy on Sale. And I started my joke with, with the, you know, uh, I've got all your jobs in the trunk of my car kind of thing right, stealing all your jobs because I'm an immigrant, playing, like, satirizing that stereotype, and immediately, there's a table in front of me, it's a black couple and two older black women, that I'm not even sure if they knew the black couple or not, like, it was very unclear throughout the whole show whether they did or didn't, but, um, the dude at the table goes, Trump, 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 and I just stared at him, and I was like, what's going on, dude? Like, what? Like, what a, you're just yelling his name. And I was like, uh, I was like, are you, are you a fan of Trump? And he goes, motherfucker, do I look like I'm a fan of Trump? And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, you just started saying his name. And he's like, yeah, you said you were an immigrant to Trump. And I was like, what does this mean? What does, what does this mean? I was like, so if you're not a, like, what are you talking about? He's like, immigration, you know, like immigration, like Trump. That's what he talks about the wall, you know, building him immig like immigration. That's his, and I was like, oh, so you're like drunk and just kind of making whatever. So I was like, look, dude, uh, whatever thoughts you have, just like write them down and come up and talk to me after the show. Cause like, I don't, I don't have anything for you. So I went on with my set, and the first part of the set has to do with me being an immigrant and growing up in America. So uh, I started doing it, and then he starts, he was like, go ahead, do some Indian, man. Do some do some Indian shit, man. Do that accent. And I was just like, nah, dude, I'm not doing the accent. I'm not, uh, that's not what I do, you know, like that, you don't get to make calls. That's not how this relationship is gonna work. Uh, and then he got, he was just like, come on, dude, do the accent, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, man. Come on, be be a friend, man. Do the accent, man. You're Indian, do the accent. And, like, and I was just like, what? No, I'm not gonna do that. And he goes, fine, I'll do it. And I was like, I don't think you should. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think anybody here requested you to do the Indian accent. And then this, this is the weirdest fucking thing that's happened to me in almost 15 years of doing comedy. He starts chanting at me in in gibberish. Like he's pretending to say stuff in Indian, right? In quotes, Indian. And he's just going like that sort of shit. And I and the whole room, like even the people at his table, the whole room goes silent as this dude is doing that to me. And everybody is confused. They're like, does he need medical attention? Is this like a stroke? Have you lost the ability to say 
words in a language that is real? And and then he stops and he goes, yeah, man. You know that. You know what I said. You know what I said. You understand that. And I was like, dude, in like 14 years of comedy, no one's ever just chanted in gibberish at me and tried to be a yogi, I think is what you're trying to do. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and the whole room is like, Nobody knew what the fuck was going on, right? Even the people at his table are like, what did you just fucking do? So, I was like, hey man, you gotta cut it. You you can't keep interrupting it. There's, like, the the opposite side of the room, the side of the room that he's not sitting on, is trying to pay attention to the comedy. Like, they're there to just have a good time. So, I was like, alright, look man, you can't, disrupted for these people that's not okay I'm not okay with that uh and then the older black woman was like I'm just trying to hear some jokes maybe if you made some jokes and I was like hey maybe if your friend stopped interrupting me I would love to tell you jokes I've been working on this stuff for a very long time I'm very happy to share the jokes that I've written with you guys that's kind of what I'm here to fucking do you know but this guy's going off and doing some weird racist shit and then uh, and then he kind of just starts laughing about it and no, and I was just like okay so I started ignoring him and uh, I continue on with the, the set and I he starts going alright man say something in Indian dog say something in Indian Come on now, say something in Indian. And I just turned around and I was like, there are over 50 languages in India. If you can even name one of them, I will attempt to say one word and then you're done talking for the rest of the night. And he goes, come on, say something in Indian, dude. Say something in Indian. And I was like, that is not a language. Give me an actual language from India and I will attempt to say something in that language. And then you have to stop talking. I won't say anything unless you're going to stop talking. And he said, I, uh, what Indianese, that's a language. And I was like, no, that's not. That's just something that you made up because you're being super fucking racist right now. And he's like, nah, nah, I am being racist. I am being Indianese is a language. It's a language. And then somebody goes, Gujarati, Gujarati. And I was like, oh, Kemcho. That's the only thing that I fucking know from that language because I think that means come here maybe I don't I, I, like I was like that's the only fucking word I've had Gujarati friends they've said that word around me that's it moving on and he was like come on dog say something in Indianese and I was like that's not a fucking language and you need and none of this is okay for you to fucking say so I was like switching gears let's just go to a different story and I go into the Uncle Marv story that I have um about Liz's uncle and it's you know redemption and all that and I'm trying to get through it and then uh in the in the middle of the story, they start going Sandman, 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 and I was just I just stopped and and I just I turned around and I was like, Yo, what kind of weird racist shit is this? He's like, Nah, 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 it ain't racist, it ain't racist. You ever seen Def Jam? You ever seen Def Jam? And I was like. Night of the Apollo, and I was like, not in a really long time. What, like, what's your point? And he's like, the same. They they pull people off the stage when the same man's. That's what to say. And I was just like, I don't care. What, like, you can't just yell Sandman at a fucking brown person. I don't think because that it could mean something completely different to someone like me. So I turn around and I was like, I really want to apologize about these people like I I wanted you guys to hear the jokes you know like the people that were paying attention like I wanted I wanted to come here and share something different with you guys you know like and 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 I feel really bad for the show producer who put this stuff together and like and and I think he wants this to succeed but like it's not going to succeed with people like this in the audience uh who are who are disruptive and they're and, and they're aggressive and they make this into a hostile environment like I'm so sorry that you guys didn't get the show. You guys didn't didn't get this show. I feel very bad. Uh, and then they started talking over me, and I was like, you know what? 
I was like, DJ, turn the music back up. I think they want to hear that shit anyway. And I put the mic in the stand and I walked off stage. And literally the host of the show doesn't show up for like two more minutes. And, uh, and then the host of the show comes up and he was just like, this dude has been sitting back there, super nice, very humble guy. Uh, and you guys treated him like shit and that's not okay for you to do. And then they were like, how we gonna treat him like shit? He's fucking, he's fucking entertaining. He gotta handle that shit. He got handled that, and he was just like, I'm just saying, dog, I'm just saying, you know, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. And then he started placating back to them, and I was just like, dude, stand your ground a little bit. You know, like, make up your mind, dude. you know? Like, are you going to be somebody that stands for the artist, or are you going to just... And, he, and then he tells... So, the owner of the bar comes up to me and goes, I'm so sorry. They've been drinking the punch all night. And I was like, I kind of figured. Uh, and, I, and he was like, this is my bar. I... I'm sorry that this was your experience here. And I was like, dude, it's cool. Like, it's not your fault. It's their fault. They have to take responsibility for, for what they did. They're, they behaved like jackasses. And that's, you know, I, you know, I don't know what the else to say about it. Uh, so then, in the midst of this, the host has now turned the microphone over to the, to the black gentleman that was, like, yelling at me and saying, being like, just very strangely racist towards me. Um, like, very odd. You know, like, I've never been chanted at before. On stage. In gibberish. So, he goes up and he's, like, talking about going to church, maybe? Uh, and immediately... About two minutes into him talking, the owner looks at me and goes, hold on one second. Boo! Boo! <laughs> and then the whole room goes, yeah! Fucking boo! Boo! And they start booing the dude. And I was just like, what the fuck is it happening right now? So... He goes, oh, come on, y'all gonna play me like that? Y'all gonna play me like that? And they all go, boo, get off the fucking stage! <laughs> I was just like, this is so weird. <laughs> so he hands the mic back over to the host. The host starts wrapping things up. The producer of the show comes up and says, you know, um, you guys really embarrassed uh, me and the black community this is a black owned bar i want the black owned businesses to like succeed and do well and krish is a very different comic he's very insightful and he speaks for you guys like he speaks about humanity in general and he transcends all this stuff and i found his work and i was very excited to bring him here and you guys treated him very unfairly blah 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 and i was like well that's nice at least you know the producer and, and kind of the host are on my side like that's cool i i appreciate that in the meantime, while this dude's, like, the, the producer's making this speech, old boy, the heckler, has worked his way around, coming up and talking to all the comics, and he comes up to me and he goes, Hey, dog, all good, right, my man? All good, all good. And I was like, no, all's not good, dude. What you did wasn't okay. It's not all good. You, you got to really think about what you did here. He's like, nah, 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 we just playing around, we just playing around, right? All good, it's all good. And I was like, no, nah, man, it's all, it's not all good. And he puts his hand out to shake, and he's like, yeah, it's all good. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to shake your hand. And then he spits in his hand and puts it out. And I was like, what makes you think, why is that a thing? Like, what makes you think that you spitting in your hand is going to make me go, oh, great, you know what? You're right. Everything now that you added your your gross alcohol-ridden saliva into the mix, you're right. I should shake your hand, and it does. It, it you know what? I see the error in my mistake. Now that you've added a, a, just a healthy, thick, mucusy dose of saliva into your palm, and then I go, no. Uh, that's gross and does not want make me want to shake your hand. In fact, it makes me want to shake your hand even less. And he goes, this motherfucker. And I was just like, really? That's how you're going to handle it? Like, I'm not going to shake your hand, dude. And everybody around him was just like, 
Uh, awkward. And then the owner of the bar is just like, you gotta get the fuck away from him. You gotta get the fuck away from him. So, at the end of the show, the producer comes up, apologizes to me, and I was like, it's okay. Like, dude, and, and I I was a little candid with him, and I was like, the show's too long. The show's too long. You gotta cut it down. People do, people have to stick to their time. You have to be real strict about it. Because I went on stage two hours into the show as a headliner. Like, if the show is two and a half, three hours long, I get that you're trying to give something that's worth the weight of the money that people are paying to be here, but after a little while, it's a return on, you're not getting the return on investment. Um, so, you know, and I was like, look, man, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to do your show. So I'll give it another shot. I always give it two shots, right? The second time similar shit happens or whatever, then it's not worth it. But, uh, I... I then shook this older woman's hand that was like, I really wish you would have been able to finish your jokes. And I was like, me too. I really wish that as well. And uh, and then the producer was like, this is my mom. And I was like, oh shit, cool. And then the heckler's lady comes over and she was like, we good, right? I mean, we just playing around. We good, right? And I was like, no, we are not good. And I was, and she's like, oh, come on, come on, how you gonna do that? How you gonna do that? And I was just like, you guys fucked up the show. And you guys not just, look, I don't have that much of a self-esteem. So, like, you guys disrespecting me at the end of the day is not this travesty or anything to me. But you guys disrespected the show producer's mom that paid to be here and a bunch of other people in the room that paid to be here to see the show not see you guys make fools out of yourselves and disrespect everyone. That's not why anybody is here. So, you guys owe them an apology. She's like, ah, you playing? Now you playing? And I was like, no, I'm not playing. I think you owe a bunch of these people an apology for fucking up the show. And then she just stat 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 stared at me and I was like, I got nothing for you, lady. Like, I'm not going to be the guy that's just like, yeah, you know what? You guys are just drunk. No, you're drunk, then fucking like, shut, the, shut the fuck up if you're drunk. Now, God, that's, I wish there, I wish alcohol would make people just be quiet more often. That would be awesome. It was a very strange event. It was a very strange event. Um, all right. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content. You can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.